Now we're going to go into browse. So um, for each of the sections of the day, we're going to tell you what to have out so that you don't have to like splay all your items everywhere. So I'll have you pull out your contour palette, your brow liner brush. Well, just a tip, my mom is a silver fax, okay? So she uses the gray color from the White Horse palette to fill her brows instead of gray. She's kind of cool. So just a little hack or a little tip for those of us who have gray hair or even blonde with a gray tonality to it. All right, so brows. I'm going to need three different models. So we have, you know, Carrie from our team. This is Corey, her sister. So I'm going to run you through protocols for different hair color. All right, ladies. So we're all familiar with the contour palette, yes? Do we all know what grayish is? Did, when you open your contour palette, top middle color in that contour palette, that's grayish. So you're gonna hear me shout out some names today. The top left color is a highlighter. It's matte, meaning it doesn't have any shine. In the middle, we have grayish, and that color we're gonna refer to a lot because we use it for contour and we use it for brows. So you're gonna hear that word grayish a lot. Um, Immediately below grayish is going to be chocolate. We're going to talk about that for brows as well. Bottom left hand corner is butterscotch. So if I kind of holler those out during the brow section, you have an idea. Does that, is it clear? We're going to go in and talk about doing a blonde brow fill. So for my blonde babes, I would say for today's look, since we're going very clean and corporate and polished, we want a soft but beautiful brow fill. What I don't want is your eyebrows to walk in the room before you do. I don't want them taking over your face. I don't want the Sharpie brow. Do you know the girls with the Sharpie brow? Yeah. So the whole idea here is that the inner corner of the brow, and you are a perfect person for this because you have like the blondest brows on planet Earth. I love it. They're clear. They're clear, she says. <laughs> They're clear. Okay, so inner corner of the brow. What I do is I, I'm going to take my brush as a guide and slide straight up. That's about where I want your brow fill to start. So I'll do it on the other side. So you can see it in camera, straight up. That's how far in your brow fill should be starting. We're going to be using grayish exclusively for Miss Corey today. And now that you know where to start the brow, We'll load our brushes and start filling them in. Your goal here is that I want you to treat your brush like it's a little pencil and you're drawing in pieces of hair, like upward dainty motions like you're drawing hairs, okay? So for my blonde girls, go ahead and rev your engines. We're gonna load up your brush using grayish. Okay? So I know where my guide is. We're going straight up from the side of the nose. I'm going to start filling in the brow. And I'm doing upward, quick little sweeping motions like I'm drawing in hairs. Wow, look on camera. Can you see the difference? Amazing. Not invisible. Okay, so let's fill in those inner corners on both sides. So I'm going straight up. And that's my starting point. Now, Corey actually doesn't have little hairs there, so I'm giving her hairs with my grayish. If your brows don't come in that far, no big deal. Just paint them in. Cool? Dry brush. And if you have blonde hair, light blonde hair, or blonde brows, this one's for you, girl. Go ahead and follow right along with us. You have two options here. If your brows aren't like clear and transparent, like you can see them and you're like, okay, I like the color deposit that I've got going on there. We can carry that all the way across. You're gonna keep your brush dry and just fill in the rest of the way across. Follow your natural brow shape. So you're not adding a whole bunch of extra. You're literally just following the shape of your brow. And the tail of the brow is really the most important piece. So I've reloaded my brush a couple times. Our goal here with the tail of the brow is to start really at the arch and just follow it down with as least like pressure, stroke, and width as possible. Can you see how Corey's brow now comes to a really nice pretty point? Okay, that's your goal. 
If it ends up getting really wide and looks like a caterpillar, we can always clean it up. But make it your goal, like this end piece, to make it nice and thin and make it come to a point like all good conversations. <laughs> there we go. Perfect. That's a big difference, right? Amazing. I asked for this little cuppy of water because I want to show you another hat. If your eyebrows literally disappear or you do your brow fill with just grays, you know, like I still can't see it, something's wrong, you can take your brush, pop it in water, get a little drop going on, and I'm literally going to take my grays and make like a paint. Has everyone in here done watercolor paint before? Like back when you were five years old in preschool? Same concept, okay? So I'm taking a drop of water and I'm putting it into my grayish. The beauty of your contour palette is you can use them wet or dry. The colors will dry out and go right back to normal, which is kind of dope. I'm gonna bring this in. So you can see I've got my brush, it's wet, and I'm making like a paint. And that will dry and go right back to normal. And I'll show you the difference. If you're using a wet brush, the difference between just so dry powder and creating the paint is that the paint deposits a ton more pigment. So if you're missing hairs, if you have a scar or a gap in your brows and you feel like you need to fix it, this will actually almost like make brow hairs or create a brow where it's not there. So again, I'm following the natural shape of her brow and I'm still treating it like I'm drawing in little baby brow hairs but you'll be able to see a difference from side to side using a wet brush application versus dry. It's a little bit sharper, a little bit darker, a little bit crisper. So depending on your goals with your brows, you'll know whether you wanna go with a wet brush or a dry brush. Okay. Can you see a difference? A little bit crisper of a line over here. Last thing that I want to do before moving on from a blonde brow is you have something called a spoolie. It's this little kind of like, it looks like a little comb on the end of your brow liner brush. So I always go in and soften the inner corner. So on Corey, I'm going to do an upward motion right through here and soften. We're gonna clean this up with concealer and with um, foundation after the brow fill is done. So don't worry about it spreading out or ending up with any color up above the brow. That's no big deal. Your goal right now is to soften the inner corner. Lovely. Okay, big difference, right? Lovely. Okay, everybody give Corey a round of applause. Thank you so much, my dear. Okay. I need, let's go with someone that has like a red tonality to their hair. Your brows look great. I just did them. You I did them. I, was, I thought I was supposed to do the blonde. That's perfect. Okay. So let's give feedback. Go ahead and bring it in nice and tight. Nice close shot. Great feedback, right? How do you like it? How'd she do? Yes. Okay, so you used grayish, correct? Okay, cool. So an alternative or something that you can add in for those of you that have red tones to your hair or... How many of us change our hair color all the time? Okay, so if you decide to go like the whole Jessica Chastain direction, like very strawberry blonde, coppers, right? If the grayish looks a little bit too brown compared to your hair, you can always add in some butterscotch. So butterscotch, when you're looking at your palette, is that bottom left-hand corner color. I'm gonna add a little bit of the butterscotch to put in the red hair tonality for her brows. And the beauty with this palette as well, if you're moving from one hair color to another, like say you 
again, went from brown to strawberry blonde. You can kind of mix both colors on your brush in between. So you can mix a little bit of grayish and a little bit of butterscotch if the butterscotch is too red for you. You can totally customize this. I'm gonna take a look into the camera. Just a little hint more of the red. Cool. Amazing. And then let's go ahead, if you have brown hair with highlights, go ahead and raise your hand for me. I need my next person. This looks amazing. I'm feeling you need to do this every day. Okay, cool. Yeah. So that's lovely. Woo. Yes. And we're going to soften the inner corners again. Always with that inner corner softening. And my reason behind this is, so many times I'll see, I don't know what the deal is. It's like these 19-year-olds, God bless America. Like, I don't know who taught them to do their eyebrows. But the inner corners are like a square. They're like a little block. Like they grabbed a Sharpie pen and like made an eyebrow. I don't know what's happening. So we want to avoid that. No blocky inner corners. I want you to take your spoolie every day. This is regardless of your, your hair color every single day. And I want you going through and softening that inner corner. So brush upward, maybe slide a little bit towards the outer edge so that this inner corner is nice and soft. Like when you look at little kids and you see their natural brows, the inner corners are a little bit sparse, right? Then they get thicker as they get like closer to the outer edge of the, the face. That's what we're trying to mimic. Really soft inner corners and more intensity towards the ends. One more time. Take a look. We good? I love it. Thank you so much. Give Angela a round of applause. Now we're going to cover a blending technique for brows. And I've never gone this extensive in showing people what to do as far as their hair color. But this is crucial because nothing in makeup is one size fits all. It's truly not. It's not cookie cutter. What works for my face is not going to work for all of your faces. My brow style is not going to work on everyone. So I'm wanting to give you options based on your hair color. So our next move is going to be for those of you who have a brown base to your hair. It could be dark brown. It could be medium. It could be that sandy brown. And you've got blonde highlights. Sarah's all the way from Japan. I'm so happy you're here. So happy you're here. Okay, so I'm going to give a little bit of a comb through really quick. Here's our goal. So we're going to go in with grayish first. So just as if you were a blonde, we want that inner corner nice and soft. We'll be starting the inner corner fill using grayish. So for those of you who have matching hair to Sarah, go ahead and load your brushes and let's get going. Again, try and do your guideline. Go straight up from the side of the nose. Okay, so about the inner 30% of the brow, we're filling it using grayish. Amazing. I'm going to go ahead and soften already. Like in um, Sarah's inner corner, look right here. Can you see how it's a little bit blocky? Like it's a little bit too strong. I want to soften that out. So I'm going to use more pressure with my spoolie and comb it until it doesn't look blocky and really strong. See the softness? Same thing on this side. Brushing straight up. I'm going to soften the inner corner. Our goal here is just so that her brows don't disappear on camera or under bright lighting. So think like a corporate environment, office environment. A lot of the time when you walk in, you have that really strong overhead, like fluorescent lighting in an office, you know, like in that setting, your brows disappear. 
Or whenever you're under HD lighting or like bright lighting in a room and try and take a picture, the brows disappear. So even if you are blonde or have like a really light red hair color, you still want to do this every day so that no matter what type of lighting you're in, whether it's like a corporate office environment or under HD lighting, you still want to see your brows. I'm loving these inner corners. And now we're going to switch colors and switch intensity. Same brush, I have my brow liner brush, but now I'm gonna be filling in using chocolate for intensity. Now you could, if you wanted a very soft brow and this was your hair color, like the kind of, like a brown base with the highlights, you could use grayish all the way across if you like a very soft brow. But for more intensity, for camera work, or when you're wanting like a very crisp brow, you're gonna switch into a darker color for about, I would say, above your pupil and then the rest of the way out. Amazing. And the reason that I go this route is, if, okay, twofold. One, you will find that whatever, whatever powder touches something that's like wet, oily, moisturized, it sticks better. If you do your brows at the beginning of your makeup routine and you're putting a powder on top of moisturized skin, the powder sticks better and it works better. going to give you intensity and longevity versus if you do your whole makeup and then go in with brow fill and try and put it on top of like powdery skin it doesn't show as much okay second thing is if you goof this up it's okay like if you kind of suck at doing brows and you're like I made them too big I think I over brushed this it's the wrong shape I do the brows first because you can go in and clean up I'm gonna go through and just kind of brush sideways, soften that out, and I'm blending where the grayish and the chocolate meet, so it should look kind of seamless once you brush through it a couple times. Some people call this like an ombre brow. Can you see how it starts really, really soft through here and then it gets a little bit more intense towards the end? You're gonna brush through, double check your work. I can see like right in here. I could use a little bit of blending, so I'm gonna add some chocolate so that you can kind of not see where the grayish stops and the chocolate starts. All my babes who have brown hair and blonde highlights, that's your protocol. I'll go ahead and fill in the other side for you. Okay, shout out to me some of your aha moments. Who is any of this information new for and what are you learning? So Joy just said that um, like her outer edges of her brows kind of fade out. Now, fascinating, but with aging and with hormones changing, sometimes with thyroid, it has nothing to do with age. It's just thyroid issues. People will start to get thinner on the outer end of their brows. So like out here will start to disappear or thin out. So if that's your scenario and you go in with a little bit deeper of a color, like switching from grayish into chocolate, you can add that intensity back in. Yes, or the wet brush will do the same thing. Amazing. So always make sure and blend if you're using multiple tonalities. Like if you're going from grayish into chocolate, make sure and just brush through and kind of blend. Make sure that you can't tell where one starts and one stops. And we're good to go. That's yours. Thank you so much. Finally, I need a babe that has really, really deep hair color. Can you bring me your um, little cuppy of water? Bring me your brow brush and your contour palette.
Let's give Nellie a round of applause and Sarah. We are gonna go in and do a really intense brow. So it's appropriate for those of you that have like a deep brunette hair color going into black, anywhere from dark brown into black for intensity. We're not gonna mess with that grayish at all. No, I always go with like the roots of the hair. Okay. So if you have really, really deep roots, go for this, for this brow. Go ahead and load a dry brush. So we're not gonna go into wet brush just yet. Dry brush with your chocolate. What do you usually use to fill your brows? Well, um, I always felt like I couldn't match these colors to my brows. So oh. I had to get something else for that. It's about to change. Yeah. Okay. So we're going in with chocolate. I'm going to do my upward little hair strokes in the inner corner with a dry brush again. This is not wet brush. Upward little hair strokes in the inner corner. I kind of tend to reload my brush and start tilting sideways. And I use my brush like it's a little pencil. So the shorter bristles are gonna be on this end, closer to Nellie's ear. And I'm gonna fill in like I'm drawing with a pencil. And I'm gonna go about halfway across. What do you guys think of the color so far? Does it work? Okay, let's get this other inner corner. I love this brush, gosh. Me too. I need a new one. I think that I've I've had mine since like when we first launched the brushes and I've washed it about 50 million times. Mm -hmm. And now my bristles don't feel the same as yours and now I'm jealous. I'm gonna need that. Okay, cool. So about halfway across. Now this is especially crucial for those of you who have like almost black roots. You can use chocolate all the way across with a dry brush if it's dark enough for your hair. Make sure that you feel comfortable with the color, okay? But because Nellie, her roots are like, they're like dark. They're like level two, maybe level three, hairstylist talk, but it's yeah. dark. It's nice and dark. We're gonna go wet brush for her. So I'll take some of that water from you. We're gonna make a little bit of watercolor action going on. And I'm going to fill in approximately 50% of the way across her brow, all the way out to the tail. Amazing. So I think we have pretty much everybody covered. We have our super blondies. We have our red haired babes. We have our brown hair with blonde highlights. So you're gonna have that lighter color in the inner corner, a little bit deeper going out towards the end. And then if you have dark brown to black hair, this is gonna be your protocol. And you can do wet or dry brush, depending on how intense you want them to come out. It's looking good, girlfriends. and soften that inner corner. Now, I will tell you, whenever I do this to myself, I end up with brow fill all the way up here. Like as I'm brushing upward, that powder is moving up into like almost my forehead, and that's totally okay. So if yours looks like that right now and you're like, oh, it looks messy, that's normal. You good, girlfriend. You good. Amazing. Okay, go ahead and turn your chin this way a little bit. So now we're going to look for symmetry. Eyebrows are technically like sisters, not twins, right? It's okay if they're not perfect. But I'm going to show you a little bit of cleanup action. Sounds like a plan? Okay, thank you so much. Okay. Give Nellie a round of applause. Thank you, my love. Okay, so here's the deal with brows. Again, like I said, they're sisters, they're not twins. So if you ever really want to be like extra detail oriented, my eyebrows are two completely different shapes. And it has to do with the fact that my face is, is asymmetrical. 
So one of my brows goes up higher than the other, one starts a little bit lower. It's something that I just have to deal with, and I'm gonna show you how to make the best out of it, especially when you're doing a brow fill. So we're gonna do cleanup of the brows. We did all that brushing, that like upward brushing, which makes the brow larger than what it should be. It kind of gets exaggerated. It gets a little bit taller than it should be. The lines are blurred, and this is our chance to clean it up and straighten out your brows and make sure that they're symmetrical. So you have a cap on your foundation. I'm gonna have you put about a quarter to a half of a pump of foundation right on your cap. We're gonna do something that I freaking love. It's so helpful to me. Does everyone know what ram's horns or steer's horns look like? They kind of look like a big eagle. We're gonna make one of those on Crystal's forehead. But it's for the greater good of mankind. <laughs> okay, so here we go. I've got my brush and it's super flat. I've applied foundation from my cap onto this brush and it's like squeezed flat, okay? That's gonna give you a super sharp tip to work with and this is gonna be like a pencil. We're gonna be outlining the top of the brow. So it goes like this. Um, on Crystal's brow, especially you can see it on this side, where we combed upward, she's got like a little bit of smudging going on and that's totally normal. This is where we clean that up. Here we go. So I'm gonna go with my brush and I wanna make sure that you can see it. So let me get my hand out of the way. I'm gonna treat my brush like it's a little pencil. I'm gonna outline the top of the brow. So if you've smudged, if you made them too big for your liking, this is your chance to clean it up. Go ahead and turn this way. Can you see that? It's a little bit like wet up here. Okay, that looks great. Going in from this side, I'm going to actually connect this all the way across and outline the top. Okay, so I did an outline of her brow going all the way across, across the center, and outlining the top. So your foundation is literally gonna take on a shape like this. It's gonna look like almost like a bird or like an eagle's wings. Carrie, Carrie Jo, will you pop up here because yours is nice and light? Can you jump up here and show them that? There you go. Can you see it? So our goal here is to outline the top of the brow and clean it up. If you've smudged, this is your cleanup zone. Now from here, I'll have you grab your blender, babe, and just soften that. Your blender, babe, is not wet yet. It's dry. That's okay. I just want you to do like an upward motion and blend that foundation into the forehead, and that's going to set us up for our next moves after break. So I'm doing kind of a dotting motion and blending it out. Everyone give Crystal a round of applause.